Hello friends, I am Dr. Suhas Talmale and today we are going to see certain important terms about enzymes. The science of studying enzymes is enzymology. What is an enzyme? An enzyme is a molecule, a biological macromolecule, wholly or largely protein. Either it is completely made up of protein or my, most of the part of it is made up of protein. But it is going to carry out biological reactions. So all the reactions inside a cell, inside an organism are carried out with the help of enzymes. In an enzyme, there is an active site. This is a common representation of enzyme and there is an active site where binds the substrate. Substrate nothing but the reactant and this substrate is converted into product. But after completion of this reaction, enzyme will come back to its original form. Means enzyme is acting as a biological catalyst. Catalyst something which will not get modified which don't take part in the reaction but it will carry out the reaction at a faster rate in a similar way this enzyme is also going to carry out the reaction at a faster rate that is substrate is converted into product but without actual modification of enzyme for some part of this reaction this enzyme may get modified but after completion of reaction it will come back in its original form and if enzyme is not still in its original form means still reaction is not complete some part of the reaction is yet to take place and that's why this is what is enzyme and this is how substrate is converted into product in active site now how enzyme work there are two main terms which we must learn here first is proximity means what suppose this is an enzyme and these are the two substrates substrate 1 and substrate 2 then what actually enzyme is going to do you can see enzyme has a binding site for these substrates and once in the enzyme's active site, both the substrates are bound, enzyme will bring these two substrates in close proximity to each other. So proximity means how fast that enzyme is going to bring these two substances or two reactants or two substrates close to each other. That is what is called proximity. Bringing substrates close. Other than that, the second most important term is orientation. Orientation means what? Suppose these are the two substrates which are going to participate in a biological reaction. And this is the active part of this substrate 1 and this is the active part of the substrate 2. And suppose the enzyme will bring these two substrates close but in such a way that their reactive parts are in proper orientation with each other. If we will bring these two substances close like this, its reactive part is facing on this direction. So they are not close, the reaction is not going to take place. So simply bringing the substrate in proximity, close proximity is not sufficient. What is essential? It is essential along with proximity, it should have proper orientation. And that's why proximity and orientation, these two are the things by which the enzyme is going to carry out any biological reaction that is going to convert the substrate into product. There might be a single substrate. If the substrate is a single, then such reactions are called unisubstrate reactions. If there are two substrates, bisubstrate reactions. If there are three substrate, trisubstrate reactions. If there are many, we can call it multi-substrate reactions. All are carried out by enzyme. Now, what is cofactor? 
because just now in the definition we have seen that enzyme is wholly means completely or largely a protein when we talk about largely a protein means in an enzyme along with protein some other part might be present these other part which is going to which is required for the protein or enzyme to perform its action is called cofactor so if this is an enzyme then this enzyme might be having a cofactor attached to it so this part might be the cofactor there are many enzymes which are not having any cofactor so they are having just the protein part that will be sufficient but there are many enzymes which have along with the protein part this is the protein part of the enzyme this one along with that they also have cofactor means something extra which is a non protein part and there are two types of cofactors either organic cofactor or inorganic cofactor when we talk about organic cofactor they mostly have vitamin origin vitamin b1 b2 b3 like this any vitamin or vitamins derivative that is modified part of the vitamin might act as a cofactor or it might be inorganic cofactor when we talk about inorganic cofactor it might be metal ions or something else but that is not a part of organic these cofactors are again uh, as they are classified into organic and inorganic but they can be further classified into two important part it might be a coenzyme or it might be a prosthetic group now this is very important concept now <clears throat> when we talk about coenzyme means a cofactor that form loose bond now this is extremely essential you must remember this that coenzyme is that cofactor cofactor means non protein part other than the protein part anything else and it is having loose bond or loose attachment with the enzyme and mostly they are vitamin or of vitamin origin and these are the chemical group carrier many a times and they are easily removable also why they are easily removable because they are loosely bound so suppose this is an enzyme and there is a cofactor a co a cofactor and which is loosely bound and we can easily remove it by anything then it's loosely bound to it and such are generally referred as coenzyme and they are mostly carrier of chemical groups and they are also called co substrate or secondary substrate why look at it for example is nad plus is its well known example nad plus or fnad nad plus is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or fnad is flavin adenine dinucleotide these molecules many a times are present in the enzyme we are taking an example lactic dehydrogenase is an enzyme in which nad plus is present and lactate dehydrogenase convert the lactate into pyruvate during this reaction lactate dehydrogenase is going to remove two hydrogen from lactate and these two hydrogens from lactate are added to nad plus because of that the nad plus get converted into nadh plus h plus by while lactate will get converted into pyruvate now during that what is going to happen suppose this is an enzyme lactate dehydrogenase in which lactate is bound which is getting converted into pyruvate during that two hydrogens will be removed and these two hydrogens are transferred to nad plus and nad plus get converted into nadh plus h plus as two hydrogens are transferred to it and this nadh plus h plus will get removed from the enzyme because in lactate dehydrogenase enzyme LDH that is lactate dehydrogenase NADH plus H plus cannot remain bound it will get removed and as soon as it will get removed again new NAD plus will come and bind so this NAD plus is a coenzyme which can be easily removed once it will get hydrogen it will can be removed so 
and again another NAD plus can come and bind. Again, lactate is converted into pyruvate, and again another NAD plus can be removed. So if it is removed, such many enzymes are there in which NAD plus as well as FAD are present. Many dehydrogenases are there in which hydrogen is removed from a substrate added to either FAD which get converted to FADH2 and it gets removed from there. So it is easy to remove them and as NAD plus is getting converted to NADH plus H plus means they are also getting modified means they are also taking part in the reaction that's why they are also called co-substrate or secondary substrate. So this is the coenzyme. Coenzyme is also a type of cofactor because any non-protein part can be a cofactor and if it is loosely bound coenzyme. Coenzyme are mostly vitamin origin but prosthetic group another important term what is prosthetic group cofactor it's also cofactor means any non-protein part but that is tightly bound that is covalently bound and if it is tightly bound or covalently bound means it is not removable <clears throat> example heme the heme part in the hemoglobin now hemoglobin is not an enzyme but it's a protein and in that protein this heme part which is bound is very tightly bound you cannot remove it if you want to remove it you have to break the complete hemoglobin then only you can remove it similarly FES that is iron sulfur complex is present in many uh, proteins especially various proteins of electron transport chain copper that is Cu++ <coughs> it is also found in many enzymes and if it is covalently bound tightly bound if it is not getting removed then definitely it's a prosthetic group but prosthetic groups are not called co-substrate because they are never giving, going to take part in the reaction no <clears throat> but they will help the enzyme they are required by the enzyme to carry out the uh, reaction properly <clears throat> then metal enzymes as the name suggests metal ions are bound to the enzyme and if metal ions are bound definitely we will call it metal enzyme doesn't matter whether that metal, metal ion is bound tightly so that to form prosthetic group or it is bound loosely we are not concerned with that every enzyme in which metal ion is present metal enzyme that's it other than that holo enzyme when along with protein some non-protein part is also present the combined enzyme is called holo enzyme so along with the protein part we have non-protein part also but if I will remove this non-protein part it might be prosthetic group it might be cofactor it might be coenzyme and if I will remove that non-protein part this protein part of the whole enzyme is called apoenzyme so apoenzyme is simply the protein part and protein part along with non-protein the complete machinery is called whole enzyme mostly it is seen if we will remove this non-protein part this apoenzyme is generally of no use now other than that <clears throat> active site which we have just seen it is nothing but catalytic site which is going to carry out catalytic reaction modulator there are two types of modulator modulator means something which will modulate the enzyme either it will be positive modulator or it will be negative modulator when we talk about positive modulator it will positively modulate the enzyme means it will stimulate that's why it is also called stimulator or it will activate the enzyme to carry out the reaction at a faster rate that's why it is either called stimulator or activator or positive modulator while negative modulator is generally referred as inhibitor means it is going to inhibit the reaction many a times it is also referred as blocker because it will block the enzyme and won't allow it to carry out reaction there is a minor difference between blocker and inhibitor also which we will learn later now allosteric enzyme as we have discussed every enzyme has active site but there are some enzymes which along with active site 
active site is present, there is no doubt where substrate will bind and convert it into product. But along with active site, they have an additional site. And this additional site is called allosteric or regulatory site. Now, allosteric or regulatory means what? Means on this site will either bound the positive modulator or will bind the negative modulator. Either positive modulator or negative modulator. On the same regulatory site, both positive and negative modulators cannot bind because enzymes are very specific. If it's a site for positive modulator, so when your positive modulator will bind, what this positive modulator will do? Suppose this is an enzyme where substrate is binding and getting converted into product. This positive modulator will bind and open the active site more, a little bit more wider, in such a way that substrate will get easy access and products will be formed easily. Also, it will activate this enzyme in such a way that most of the reactive groups of this enzyme will keep on interacting with substrate and ketone converting into product. But suppose this allosteric site is designed for negative modulator. Definitely when negative modulator will bind, what it will do? It will try to close the active site in such a way that no substrate can bind and no product can be formed. Or this negative modulator can change the active site in such a way that substrate binding side of the enzyme will be lost. So, reaction cannot take place and this is how negative modulator can work. So, positive modulator is also called stimulator or activator but negative modulator is also called inhibitor or blocker and what it is doing? It is modifying the enzyme and such enzymes which along with catalytic site or active site also have allosteric site or regulatory site are called allosteric enzymes. They are also called regulatory enzymes. We are going to learn about this detail in detail in the next lecture. Allosteric site is what? Nothing but this site. This site is the allosteric site and this enzyme is the allosteric enzyme. So today we have discussed about a few uh, important terminologies regarding enzyme. Thank you.